Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this Mothering Sunday, our worship in the Angus Dundee and Perthia circuit. Our worship this morning is being led by the Reverend Tim Thorpe. Tim is a supernumerary minister, recently moved into the Dundee area and from the, uh, from the dark side, from the Strathclyde circuit. So we're delighted that uh, Tim is now part of our circuit and as restrictions uh, start to allow, I hope that you will be able to meet Tim face to face and get to know him and welcome him properly. But we begin our worship with our Lent liturgy. O Lord our God, we are here journeying in Lent, and here is perfume. There were many who cared for Jesus as he walked this earth, Mary and Joseph, the visitors and gift givers, the water givers, the perfume pourer. O Lord our God, yours is the care beyond compare. As we have journeyed in life this far, there have been those who have walked with us, who have lavished us with love and care. O Lord our God, let us care as you have cared. We add a perfume bottle to our Lenten cross.
Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent, traditionally observed in the church calendar as Mothering Sunday. It's the day in the UK and elsewhere that's also marketed and marked as Mother's Day. Mothering Sunday was the day when family members, often girls and young women, who'd left home to work, maybe in domestic service, were allowed home to see family, friends and neighbours. In the context of church life, this Sunday became the day to return in body or thought to a mother church, maybe to a congregation which had planted daughter churches, or to the people and the place of earliest upbringing. People building, maybe, which had contributed to what we would now call formation. Mothering, accurately or not, is still often identified with the nature and role of women. But it seems to me that mothering is wider and deeper than that. It's about nurture, care, support, comfort, love. And these are not confined to persons of any one gender or inborn characteristic. They are of the essence of all human nature. They are of the essence of the divine nature. We experience mothering, nurture, care, some support, comfort, teaching, example, love from God and from other people. Today's prayers are based on material written by members of the Iona community in the context of Mothering Sunday. And they seek to encompass and celebrate expressions of mothering, of love, as we experience them in, through and from God, and in, through and from other people, throughout our journey of life, throughout our journey of faith. So, let us pray. A prayer of approach and being in the presence of God. Come, mothering God. Come as an enfolding, nurturing presence. Come as steadfast love to hold us. Come, mothering God. Come as enabling, strengthening force. Come as tough love to let us go. Come, mothering God. Come as friend and comforter. Healing our wounds, walking our way. Come as wounded healer to make us whole. A prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, Mother, Father, Parent of us all, hear us as on this day in particular we give thanks for all who have mothered us and for life-giving, mothering care. We remember before you with deep gratitude those in our lives who have been and are our life-givers, supporters, carers and inspire us. We give thanks for all those among our immediate families and relatives, in circles of friends, colleagues, neighbours, people from our past as well as our present, all who have shared in and contributed to our growth and development, who helped us to become the people we now are. Look with love and mercy, we pray, on any mixed emotions which may come to us on this or any other day. Hallow and heal our memories. Forgive any guilt or shame. And help us to be at peace with our feelings and our thoughts. A prayer of confession. 
generous God, Father and Mother of us all, origin and source of love, care and compassion. We come to you not only in gratitude but in humility, to ask forgiveness for the poverty and inconsistency of our love for yourself and towards others. Forgive us for our selfish and inward-looking attitudes, for trying to excuse ourselves from responsibility for all in need, for our failing to care for those who are lonely, undervalued and disrespected, those who may feel unlovable, who are fearful, those who are hungry, poor, homeless. Grant that in the faces of all with whom we have contact or knowledge, we may see the faces of loved ones, and that we might respond with all the concern and commitment that family and friendship demand, for your love's sake, and following the example of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we now pray. I invite you to join in saying the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover festival, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They gave a supper in his honour, at which Martha served, and Lazarus was among the guests with Jesus. Then Mary brought a pound of very costly perfume, pure oil of nard, and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair, 
till the house was filled with a fragrance. At this, Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was to betray him, protested. Could not this perfume have been sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not out of any concern for the poor, but because he was a thief. He had charge of the common purse and used to pilfer the money kept in it. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you have always among you, but you will not always have me. Amen. Our second reading this morning is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. God's grace to the Gentiles. You were once dead because of your sins and wickedness. You followed the ways of this present world order, obeying the commander of the spiritual powers of the air, the spirit now at work among God's rebel subjects. We too were once of their number. We were ruled by our physical desires and did what instinct and evil imagination suggested. In our natural condition, we lay under the condemnation of God like the rest of humankind. But God is rich in mercy, and because of his great love for us, he brought us to life with Christ when we were dead because of our sins. It is by grace you are saved. And he raised us up in union with Christ Jesus and enthroned us with him in the heavenly realms, so that he might display in the ages to come how immense are the resources of his grace and how great his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you are saved through faith. It is not your own doing. It is God's gift, not a reward for work done. There is nothing for anyone to boast of. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the life of good deeds, which God designed for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Complete and total worship. John 12 verse 3. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. I wonder if you're having a dinner party, who would you invite? I'll choose Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King, Billy Holiday, and to brighten things up a little bit, Groucho Marx. I wonder who you would invite. Here we find Jesus, and the cross is beginning to cast its shadow upon him. He's a wanted man. His life is in constant danger. Every knock on the door is filled with menace. 
Another of the agonies of Lent is that Jesus was hounded at every step, unwelcomed and unloved. And the phrase, the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head, rings true. Here at last, though, is a safe place. It might not be the Jerusalem Hilton, but it's a welcome nonetheless. The folks at the house know him well. Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And then there's the ever busy Martha, wiping the table, brushing up the crumbs, refilling the cups, replacing empty bowls, doing what she does, playing to her strengths, happy to be a round peg in a round hole. I wonder if we need to thank God for those who are round pegs in round holes, doing what they can to serve the Lord. Then there's Mary, who does something simply glorious. Indeed, the last and most beautiful thing that anyone would do for Christ before he climbed onto the cross. One can imagine her rummaging around trying to find this small vial of perfume. Many theologians say in modern day terms it would be a, a year's savings, probably fifteen to twenty thousand pounds. How extravagant, how reckless, how foolish. But she has to do it. She breaks the jar and pours a perfume over his feet. But in reality, and perhaps unknowing, she is anointing him, preparing him for death. Unwittingly, it's an act of reckless, extravagant, total love. I wonder what our giving's like. Do we give what we can just spare? Or do we worship him with all that we have and all that we are? You see, Mary couldn't separate her giving from her worship. For well, giving is worship, and worship is giving. I wonder if we bring joy to Jesus by our giving or sadness. And then we like the idea, don't we, of this perfume fragrantly filling the air, going into every room. What is the fragrance we give off in our service of Jesus? Are we really known for being generous, reckless lovers? And don't we long to spend time with people who are reckless and lavish in the way they love Jesus, the way they love others, and the way they love others? And then a dark cloud seems to ascend upon the story, upon the room. And here's Judas, cold and calculated, quick to criticise Mary's giving as being reckless and wasteful. He knew the price of perfume, but he didn't understand the cost of the gift. Sadly, in the church, I've known people who have criticised the giving of others, stopped them from offering their praise to Jesus. Not wanting them, unless they reflect their own values. I hope we're bigger than that. I hope we're better than that. You see, this story isn't about giving, it's about total worship. A faith that sees how lovely, how wonderful, how great, how majestic, how glorious Jesus is and falls head over heels in love with him. It reminds us that giving is more than just brass and money. It's heart and soul and mind. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It's an attitude and experience that lifts us to the heights of glory, because we are lifting up the name of Jesus. And then there was that reading from Ephesians. It reminds us 
It tells us, it staggers us when we glimpse how deep, how rich, how full and all embracing the love of God is in Christ Jesus for each and every one of us. May we as a church worship Christ with all that we are and all that we have. And may we be known by our families and communities as reckless lovers of Jesus and of all people. He's worth it. Jesus is really worth all our praise, all our love and all our giving. Amen.
Our prayers of intercession are based around words of Mother Julian of Norwich, a 14th century mystic. Ever loving God, Christ our true Mother, we pray for all who are seeking or in need of mothering care, of cradling or being cradled, of nurturing or being nurtured, of holding or being set or being held, of letting go or being set free. We pray for all in need of giving or receiving comfort, safety, security, change or challenge, forgiveness and release. We pray for all who wish to experience or share laughter, friendship, companionship, hospitality, belonging, acceptance, respect, the sense of being at ease and at home with themselves and amongst others. And in quietness, we remember those who are particularly on our hearts and minds and in our thoughts. We ask that we may commit ourselves to live as members of your church and the wider faith community among our own circles of family and friends, within our own neighbourhoods, as members of society, and in the wider world, that we may thereby show Christ's mothering care for all. For we gather, pray, and seek to serve in his name. Amen. And finally, a blessing from Ephesians chapter 1. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, 
may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Thanks be to God. Amen.